welcome to Tracking the Recovery, a special series where we are focusing on the real estate sector. The last few years have been tough for many developers in the realty sector, forcing them to rework plans. As things stand, and as we've been discussing, the fact is that the sector is burdened with debt, record amount of unsold inventory, and demand which is yet to really pick up. So how are things looking on the ground across some of India's key markets like Mumbai and the South? Well, joining me to discuss this are Anuj Puri, Chairman and Country Head of JLL, Gaurav Gupta, Director at Omkar, and Mr. J.C. Sharma, the Vice Chairman and MD of Shobha Developers. Anuj, let me start with you. The picture has been dreary and I think this has been one of the worst affected industries or sectors in the recent downturn. And we've seen two quick cycles over here playing out. Uh, leaving many of the developers really bruised and <laughs> beaten. So how are things looking at this stage? Um, let, let me divide it into sort of four different topics and I'll be very brief. Uh, of four different verticals within the real estate, two easy and two very challenging. Mm. So the easy ones, which is quite contrarian, were offices and retail. And these were the two sectors which were very tough, but today very easy because the demand particularly coming in from the IT and the Indian corporates has just gone berserk. Mm. I think 2014 will be perhaps one of the best years that India would have seen in terms of the demand. Certainly the H2 of this calendar year will be the best H2 that we would have mm. seen. The prices have started to rise. They are just about coming to the peak level of 2008. I think the two troubled areas are really on the residential and the second is really liquidity mm. in this sector. And on the residential as well, if the pricing is correct, whether it's in the affordable or in the luxury segment, we're seeing movement happening in there. If the prices is really beyond what the pocket of the buyer is able to deliver, whether it's the larger size of the apartment or a higher value, that's where we're seeing the supply in excess of the demand. And that's where we're seeing the market really take a so it, luxury is a big problem. Luxury is a, is, a, is a problem and that also I would say is largely it's Bombay and NCR. Sure. Those are the two areas where it is. Okay. And the last one is really the liquidity which is the bedrock mm -hmm. at this moment in time which is what is creating problems because the banks have been very reluctant to give. Private equity who was lending money to <coughs> the developers are only now looking to buy completed assets because they're saying this is safe, secure, income yielding, office, retail, that's what we're going to buy. NBFCs are in the market, but they are really looking anything between 19 to 22 percent as the, as the uh, interest rate. The, the buyer who was out there, and I had thought is that after this government came in, just like what we had seen in March 2009, the previous UPA2 mm -hmm. government came in, you know, there was a huge amount of sales push that had happened. I thought that it would happen this time as well. In fact, if anything, it should have happened more because this government came in with a lot more clear majority, but that push which we had seen in March 2009 in terms of the demand on the residential hasn't come in. So that liquidity that from the sales hasn't started okay, so to come let, in. So let's uh, get Mr. Sharma. And Mr. Sharma, on the whole, the first half has been disappointing. The, the kicker which uh, came from the mandate hasn't quite come. And of course, monsoons are seen traditionally as a uh, not so good time for, for sales. So what's the sense that you're getting on the ground? Exactly what you have articulated and Anuj has uh, communicated just now, the first half was not good for the industry and uh, especially the markets, uh, the NCR market and the Mumbai market, they have been going through with this demand contraction and the liquidity uh, related challenges. Whereas the southern markets had shown some kind of resilience, the volumes may not have gone up as per our expected lines, but somehow ensured that the developers are above water. As we have started moving into the second half and especially from the month of June 2014, what we have been witnessing is that sudden kind of a thing from April and May and, and from a steady point of view uh, from June to July to August. And we believe that ki the overall volumes in residential segment across all India, across all major six cities should be better this financial year than the last financial year. Gaurav, uh, the picture in uh, MMR, the Mumbai metropolitan region, doesn't look very pretty. So, what sense are you getting? Visibly? I think uh, I think what's important in the Bombay market is, you know, to there is a there is a sense of risk in the market, as to you know where, where the delivery is a risk. Like mm. you mentioned, there will be certain projects where completions have got stuck, but there are certain projects, you know, where the risk appetite, you know, where the, where there is no risk from a perspective of you know permissions, from a perspective of you know approvals. 
because if you look at Bombay market, couple of years back the development control regulations in the city changed and you know these regulations were going on since 1991. So, that change in regulations had a big impact on certain projects, the viability of certain projects got impacted. But you know projects which have got approvals, you know project where financial closures have taken place, projects you know where strong brands have been associated you know. There you will see sales picking up. Okay, Anuj, where are these 200,000 <laughs> units that have not been sold? Uh, uh, and which are the companies that are uh, under liquidity pressure? I mean, because sudden, you know, w in a forum like this, you always have a developer say, it's not me. You know, <laughs> who is it? <laughs> who are these ghost people who are not selling flats yeah. and in trouble? So, many these are people who were fly-by-night operators mm -hmm. who came into this market and b these were, you know, doing other stuff and saw that there is a big opportunity come into this market, do a joint venture, joint developer with the landowner and then start a building, start selling the building lot more quicker than what you have been going to be able to deliver, use that money to buy the next plot of land and if the cycle would have gone on, I think they would have been successful and they would have got through. As the cycle slowed down and it's nearly stopped before the elections, those are the guys that have got caught out. What is the cascading impact of this crisis? On the already you have banks complaining; they've frozen funds to the realty sector. You have high levels of debt. Uh, if this remains unsold, what's going to happen to the industry? Because it has a cascading impact. Yeah, absolutely correct, I mean, So, in my opinion, the only way that they will be able to come out is to consolidate with some other developer. Hmm. Otherwise, there is no way. You, you are not going to be able to force a retail investor to come in and buy your apartment if the apartment is not getting sold. Mr. Sharma, is this a good time to consolidate? Is that is that the trend you are seeing? As, as Shobha developers, would you be interested in buying out, bailing out uh, desperate uh, realty developers who are stuck? And do you see a lot of that happening on the ground? See, we would like to answer this question in a different manner. In fact, as far as Shobha is concerned, in the last three, three four months, whatever transactions we have done, we have done with our developers community only, be it Pune, be it in the south sort of a thing. And we believe that that is what uh, the most of uh, the other developers also should follow suit and which is good for uh, the developers and for the industry because the liquidity what they will generate will help them to repay or to, to become their, uh, to make their balance sheet stronger and for us also it becomes an opportunity. Right, we're heading to a short break. We'll come back and look at uh, some of the micro markets uh, in the region that we're talking about and how prices are moving, how demand is moving, and what's the stress on the ground. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Tracking the Recovery. We're focusing on the real estate segment. Uh, Anuj, uh, let's talk about the stress uh, areas, if you would look at MMR as a region, what's your prognosis? So, many if the developer has been able to deliver the project, mm. the sales have been pretty decent. The trouble is where the developer has either not been able to complete the project or they have just launched a project and the either location of the project is not good or the credibility. Yeah, I, I would say even more than the location is the credibility of the developer. So, as the retail buyer today, people have become so nervous and they are saying, does the developer have the ability? to deliver of the quality that they have given us or <coughs> promised and does the project have the financial wherewithal with all the approvals in mm. place. If they have, I can tell you it is still selling. So, the problem is approvals. If the problem is approvals, Anuj, a lot of money has been locked in without approvals and that is the, the crux of the real estate problem in the country. How does a re real estate developer, no matter how big he is, survive those three years of no approvals and, and money invested? And that is a big killer. Absolutely, it's a big killer, and particularly if the developer has gone out into the market and borrowed that money to buy and land. And why that has happened, right? And then some part of it has happened. So that is a big challenge. So let me be more specific. Some of the big real estate developers in the in the in the city, there were headlines all of last year and the year before saying that they're on the brink. They have not paid up many of their vendors. What's the status of them? Do you think uh, many of them, I, mean, I can name them, DB Realty, Unitec, <laughs> you know, uh, um, all these companies, do you see them coming back into the green? Do you see them coming back uh, out of the debt factor? I think they are in? Any, any developer, so two categories, I mean, I would say any developer who has got income yielding assets will 100% get bailed out. I am telling you that market has just gone berserk with foreign equity funds coming in and buying completed assets. You know, every month I am seeing the capital appreciation on those projects happening because they are really putting in money to buy that. So, if any of those have completed assets, they are going to be bailed out because there is a huge amount of interest 
pension funds, you name it, they are coming into, into this. Is, or if they have clean parcels of land with approval. Mm. Gaurav, the other trend has been this focus on luxury. You know, so every uh, year we have seen one uh, flavor, you know, <laughs> and I think uh, the, the, uh, two years back it was uh, luxury and after that it became uh, redevelopment ultra and then there was a borderline ultra uh, luxury mm -hmm. as well and now of course it is affordable housing. But the residual impact of that luxury obsession, what is it going to mean? Because many of the unsold houses are over there. I think, you know, that is what the challenge in the city has been, you know, like you lightly mentioned, you know, if you look at South, if you look at South Bombay as a city, South Bombay as a city, and you look at it, the major luxury element was there in the central, uh, was there in central Bombay. Why did this thing come up? You know, if you look at the, if you look at the history, if you look at historically, lower peril as a belt typically was where the cotton textile mills were. Sure. This is where the typically uh, in the commercial units used to come up. What happened was five years back, because of the slump of the Lehman crisis, there was no demand for uh, there was no demand for com commercial projects. What happened typically then was developers in certain areas started building residential apartments because there was a shortage of residential apartments in South Bombay. What the product mix which came out unfortunately was that you know, since it is lower peril, it is part of South Bombay. Let us try and build larger apartments. You know and we will be able to sell them and make a value out of it since commercial was not in demand. I think that is where a bit of mistake happened from the luxury market perspective. I think whatever luxury or larger apartments have been built on lower peril are the ones which are struggling. Mm. But if you build luxury at the right location, if you actually build it on Burley as a location, that is not where the struggle is. You know, If you have got the approvals, you have got the right product at the right place which you talk about. Sales have been this, there. This analysis is great in retrospect, Gaurav. What happens to the projects which are there, <laughs> which are stuck <laughs> over there? Because that has a cascading impact on the entire market. I think what's happened is if you look at those projects typically, they typically started with 5,000, 6,000 square feet. I think uh, developers have realized over a period of time that it's not going to sell out there. Huh. So typically they've started resizing them. Do you see that happening? Yes. Absolutely. And that's, that's, the only way. And that's, that's the only way. That's, that's, that's going to declog it according mm. to you? Because if you if you bring down that many 5,000 to say 2,500, your ticket price automatically goes half. Mm. And that's the only way that so you can you know the way we look at it, something which is below 8 crores will sell at lower peril. Something north of 10 crores will sell at Bali. So typically lower peril, a lot of projects have started getting resized and that's where the market is, you know, that's where the demand has started coming in typically. Mr. Sharma, let's look at the two markets down south which are Chennai and Bangalore. <coughs> what is interesting is that Chennai bucked the trend for most of the period and only started falling uh, sometime mid last year and the fall continues over there because a conservative market as such. Bangalore, what's interesting is that perhaps because the IT industry was doing well, all of last year was fairly good. What sense are you getting of these two markets specifically and how do you see prices move there? In my view, the, the Chennai market as well as uh, this Bangalore market still remains reasonably vibrant when we compare them vis-a-vis -vis what you have witnessed in the northern market or in the MMR sort of a thing. But if we compare this with the peak, what was there about a year back or so, we do find that there has been some demand contraction. It is primarily on account of, as we all agree, that as the economy was slowing down, somewhere there was uh, this kind of a slackness which got converted into low demand. And, and I, I come back to my this original theme that the sentiments on the ground has improved. The, the actual volumes are there. Both these markets are being driven by the actual buyers. So the investment uh, related demand is quite minuscule and they have started coming back. At the same time the economy has to pick up. We believe that uh, the RBI this month will start reducing the interest rates also. The banks have again started competing with each other in giving home loans even to the luxury homes at the rates at which they were giving to the so called non luxury homes sort of a thing. And once this interest rate comes down below 10 percent, it is already there. We believe the demand in all the regions uh, should start picking up. Okay. But Mr. Sharma, I could argue that most economists say that rates are going to, interest rates are going to come down only by the first half of FY16, which is a long way off. Now, my question to you is that one could also argue that a lot of the revival is because of supply demand adjustments. As uh, Anuj was saying, we have not seen too much of commercial real estate come up, hence prices are going up. We have not seen more projects uh, being launched, that is why the residual or residential prices are going up. This does not seem like a real recovery, Mr. Sharma. It looks like an adjustment. I want to agree. At the end of the day, 
what we need to see is that ki the, the new bookings the way it is going to happen in this financial year should be higher than what it was in the last financial year and if those data points suggest that ki there is an uptick in the overall demand irrespective of uh, the, the inventory levels so or irrespective of whatever is happening at a micro or macro level to the economy or to some developers if the overall volumes have gone up like uh, we find in case of commercial real estate if uh, the overall volumes double in the second half you can rest assured uh, there will be some kind of a trickle down effect as far as the real estate market is concerned <laughs>
going to the public market was probably the best decision our company had taken in 2006. We were the first one and there are no regrets. Well, we had gone wrong primarily internal to us and which probably all of us uh, had realized much later age as one of the panelists was just now selling Mr. Gupta that uh, it was a land bank game and Indian economy grew 8, 9, 10 percent and we were all new to the business and we were being told that okay with SCJs, with integrated townships and with the kind of demand uh, right what India will create we need to grow faster and for growing faster in Indian context the land was the only differentiating factor rest everything we believed it is available on tap money was available on tap demand was supposed to be available like that and, and we believe that okay we have to execute and, and for which in India labor or materials as such will not be a constraint. 2008 taught at least to Shobha that yes somewhere while we did honor our commitment of buying the land but we had also gone overboard vis-a-vis -vis when the demand contraction happened. From selling X we started selling X by 2, X by 3. But with the QIP again we were able to set our debt equity under control and thereafter we had a discipline for next four or five years of not adding any land bank but launching the project, selling the projects and honoring our every word whatever we have given to every stakeholder. But the other issues what we need to address is that external issues still remain. If in India you take one or two years to buy a land and if it takes one or two years to get the approvals that is the root cause of the most of the liquidity related challenges. Sure, Mr. Shah, that's a well-made point. Um, but let's look at tracking the recovery. How do you see the process of recovery, yeah. Anuj? Most of your weak players or unorganized players are going to get beaded out. I don't think at the end of this black tunnel, you're going to see all the players who entered the black tunnel emerge out of it. Mm -hmm. I think some of them will disappear uh, into that is. That's the first thing that is going to happen. So whoever emerges out will be a stronger, more mature, <coughs> more professional player. The second is to your point on the regulations. I think you're going to see land acquisition, you're going to see the regulator coming in, you're going to see REIT. They are going to determine how the behavior of the real estate community is. I'm not only seeing developers, you know, it's all the, all the, all the stakeholders in that. So you're going to see that change a lot. The third factor is going to be your buyer. Mm. Buyer will pay a premium to people who have delivered credible projects. But well, Gaurav, if you look ahead, you getting into the festive season, one view is that a lot of the inventory could be sold off uh, in, in terms of festive offers, etc. Do you see that happening? Because that normally would dampen the prices somewhat. Well, what is your sense? No, I think like you mentioned, the festive offer and with the overall mood in the economy being much better as compared to the last year. Mm. Mr. Modi being on a Japan visit announcing $35 billion coming to the country, coming in various infrastructure projects, talking of you know 100 smart cities coming up. I think from that perspective, this festive season is very, very important for the industry as a whole. And I think overall what we've been seeing since the past four to six months, consumer comfort and consumer perception definitely has, incre has improved. You know, mm. people have made money in the stock market. Mm. A bit of that, you know, you will start seeing. We've seen a little bit of it getting diverted toward real estate. Probably the Sensex keeps on increasing, you'll see more and more of get, get, get that getting diverted. And I think, you know, with affordability coming in, in, you know, in terms of ticket sizes, I think this festive season you should definitely see okay. sales so, increasing. When you shake off the overhang of uh, the 200,000 homes? I think, you know, like Anuj mentioned was that consolidation has started taking place from developers. The inventory overhang is more because of stock projects. Hmm. I think consolidation in the city has already started and with the markets picking up currently, you know, I think in the next year and a half, two years, you know. So you're seeing a consolidation. Yes, you've got consolidation. To drive that yes, keeping absolutely. Up. So let's wait and watch out for that. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, gentlemen, Thank for you. joining Thank us. You very much.